Okay, so this is the wig. This is gonna be a little lengthy, but yeah. So I did uh, like an unboxing of it, but I have no clue where that footage is. So we're gonna start from here. We're gonna start off by taking out this comb because this is where your part's gonna go. So you just don't want a comb where like, it's just gonna look stupid. So you don't wanna do that because it's super duper unnecessary. And then after this, you take it out. You wanna be careful with this because you don't wanna pull and tear your lace as you can see, I tore mine just a little bit, but it's fine. Uh, but the more accurate you are with this, accurate, that is not a word, accurate you are with this, then the easier it will be. So now that that's out, you see this a little bit, but nothing crazy. I went ahead and bleached the knots on this unit. They did not want to bleach, but you'll see in my installation video what I went ahead and did with this. So from here, what I'm going to do is I went ahead and washed it and... I'm going to go ahead and give, put the part where I want it to be because, of course, we want a nice deep side part. That's how Tiana's hair was. And I will be using my original version that I did as a reference. And for that version, I used photos of her. So this makes it much easier. So we're going to go ahead and part. And then once we finish parting, we're going to go ahead and put it into sections to start the cutting process. This is a 14-inch full lace unit with a stretchable uh cap panel in the back i'll put the link for this exact wig from wig encounters below now i did notice something with this wig is that when i did the exact same thing i did with the other one my part's gonna change a few times so keep that in mind but i did the same thing but you could see the cap on this one a little bit more than you could on the other one so i'm assuming that the cap construction isn't exactly the same because they were not exactly the same so this is the side piece where your this is the part that's going to go behind your ear so you want to part this a little further back than you would just because you want to make sure that that whole section back there is parted so that you can put a lot of layers on the side where it will lay flush to your head so this is the back section and this is where all of the well, this is would be the, sec the second section. This is where all the layers would be within the back of the nape all the way up to the crown of the head. And this is the bang piece that will go right here in the front. So you should end up with three sections just like this. Part it off to make sure that you're not going to accidentally cut. So we're going to pretty much cut it all the same. But yeah. So then we're going to start here with the size. So that's the one that I wore and reviewed in the back. And this is the one that I'm going to cut now. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull the hair to away from the actual head like such. And you're going to cut. The thing that you want to remember with cutting is that when you cut away from your head and then it falls, it makes a tapered look towards the bottom. If you cut straight down and across, it's going to be blunt. So when you cut like such... And then you go ahead and let this hair fall. It's going to give that nice tapered look at the bottom of the hair, as you can see on the other um, on the other wig. Now, in this video, I could not find my really good shears. So these are some really bad dull shears that I had sitting around. And then at one point, y'all going to see me use like some really just some regular paper scissors just because I just couldn't for the life of me remember where the hell my shears were and I wasn't trying to leave until I was done so this is the only section you should be doing this with and this is to create this back piece you're going to use this as a guideline um, you're going to use this for a guideline for the back part so that it all kind of you'll see once we get there so you're just pulling out and you're cutting now this is the length of this I'm going little by little because normally I would have cut way more off because I'm used to doing this but you got to remember that if you cut too much off, you can't put it back. But if you cut a little bit and you just, you know, you keep trying it on and make sure. And it's going to vary depending on whose head it is because some people's foreheads and faces are longer. So sometimes you might want to leave it a little bit longer depending on the style, the desired style. So for the bottom section here, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and you're going to pull this out. Like I said to do earlier, you're going to pull it out and you're going to cut it. We're going to make the bottom portion of this. So where that's parted shorter and the top of this longer so that you have a like think of a seven just think of the the letter set i mean the letter seven oh girl the number seven and how it looks it's longer 
it darts out at the top and then it comes down at the bottom so that's the shape that you pretty much want to do with this now i'm doing it in smaller sections just because i want to make sure that i don't end up with too like they're not they're just too short and listen you can always get scissor happy believing that you got it and you killing it and then you look at it and it's too short so what do you do you know to have to add tracks to a full lace wig defeats the entire purpose this could have just been a frontal so to avoid that and as you can see i'm struggling with these really dull scissors shears excuse me act like i didn't go beauty school girl um so yeah i'm just going through just making it a general shape i'm only cutting off probably about two and a half inches of hair at the most you know not very much i like personally to do this while the hair is wet for the initial cut because it's easier to put the hair in the direction that i would like it in and then you'll see we're gonna round brush it and do that whole thing so just take your time because that way everything will just it's gonna make a lot more sense if you take your time with it sometimes if it's gonna take you a couple of days to do it take your time because again buying a wig then wasting the money by jacking it up is not very smart if you're looking to try this for the first time i would suggest doing this on a synthetic wig gives you the same situation you know it's, it's, it's the same thing although synthetic wigs don't really lay like this when they're wet or if you just have a wig laying down or just laying around then do it as you can see this is when i transitioned to the paper scissors because those dull ones was just not work and it it did the job when i go ahead and texture it and all that i won't be using this but for the initial cut i just couldn't take it no more so of course it's not really what you have is how you use it i've done full cuts with these type of scissors i don't suggest it on real hair because they're terrible for your ends and they will give you the worst split ends ever but you know the the proper tools always work but sometimes when in china when in rome girl do what you gotta do so going through and we're just cutting it a little bit more and more and as you can see as i'm going down it's starting to get longer at the top and the back is more of a tapered look because once we go ahead and start to bump it and curl it you'll see why this was done now i don't know what it is about this cap but it seems like the cap was put on crooked and then as you can see like that line it seemed like it was put on crooked so that's why you can start to see in my part later on you'll notice you can see it a little bit which it's fine you just take some concealer and call it a day so in this section this will be the bang part which is coming down over the eyes so when you go ahead and cut straight up and straight across you're going to end up with a the same thing which is this you see it's blunt there but when you let it go it's going to have this nice tapered swoop bang feel within at the top now, for me, I'm cutting this based on what I see because this fits my head. For someone else, it may be a little bit shorter. Sometimes it may be a little bit longer. And always make sure you put, I like to call it fake body in it. So when you do round brush it or you bump it, you know where it's going to lay. Because sometimes if you cut it to the exact length and you try to bump it, it's going to be so, it's going to like when Beyonce let blue ivy cutter bangs with those paper scissors like that. So here, I'm just pulling it straight out. And I'm cutting so that it could just go ahead and lay. And I'm just giving myself a guideline to understand that where is it going to be short? Where is it going to be longer? So that when I do go in and round brush it and it is longer, I can see what needs to be shorter and what needs to be longer. Again, this is one of those things that takes time. And after a while, you start to understand. It's very easy to do. And I'm trying to keep this as in, in layman's terms. It's easy because over-directed, under-directed, off-base, on-base, that confuses people. And it kind of discourages people. So we're going to just say, pull it straight out to your chest and cut it. Okay? That's what we're doing. So that would be the side section. And some of the bang but not really that's really just more so the side section this section at the top is the bang section so i'm just going through and i'm cutting all of the bang section that i um sectioned off in the beginning i'm just cutting it all to one length so that it feels you know like okay we're getting somewhere the hair is getting shorter but it doesn't look butchered that's that's pretty much what you want if at this point things are starting to look a little bit on the i don't know side resection off everything and then not necessarily start over but just reevaluate the whole look that you're doing does all your three sections have a section is some pieces longer than others so if the back is longer than the sides 
you know, that's good. If it's shorter than the sides, you got a problem. So as you can see now, as I'm going to blend these into each other. And this is the easiest way starting out to do this is to understand to work in sections. Some people, if you watch, you know, watch professional hairstylists, they don't work in sections because they're used to it. They know what they're doing. And this is something that they do every day. But if you're a person who doesn't know what you're doing every day, sections will save your life and it will save your wig and it will save the hairstyle. And always go longer and then go shorter once you actually put it on your head. This is still a wig block. So again, there is no eye line or whatever. I'm using another wig as my pretty much my guide. So at this point, we just have a short wig with a little bit of layering in it. And that's about it. So we feel like we really ain't did nothing but take some hair off. And you think why you just didn't cut it all even around. That's because you just that's that's not the look. So as you can see here, it's like goes straight from the like regular lace and then the, the actual cap starts to come in. But I didn't have that issue on this other one. And they're the exact same wig because they sent me the same exact wig. I don't know if the cap construction, like I said, was either crooked or what it was. But that was interesting. So on this side, I was looking to see if I got the same feel. Like, does it do this on this side too? And it did. So as you can see, there is a lot of body in it now so I'm, I can see that it's going to sit up like I want it to the part is still horrendous to me I don't like it at all but we'll fix it as time goes by so at this point you're going to take your uh, blow dryer I had just round brushed some gray hair that I'm doing so excuse my brush but so you're just going to go ahead and you're going to round brush this wherever you see where there should be a curve should be, which would be at the end of this entire look. All of this look has a bump in it. That's what you want to do. So you take this and you go ahead and bump it. At this point, I was just really trying to give it a shape. I wasn't trying to really go in for the whole like neat look because I know I have more cutting to do. So it really just didn't serve much of a purpose um, because this part right here in the, in the front there are three sections that you're going to want to like bump this in. So as you can see, this front section, I'm going to go, this is going to go towards my face. So the brush should be rolled like a roller towards your forehead. The side part, as you can see, this middle part right here, this is going to go down and then this back part is going to go out. So there are three sections in this, this um, bang area. There's the very beginning the middle and the back so don't forget that because if you try to do this i i'm telling you you do this part wrong it's going to easily turn into somebody's aunties it's going to really be the auntie style i'm just saying though you know you don't some you want to the reason why this is so edgy because it's split up and it looks more effortless and more chic don't worry about the ends of this being curly because we're going to handle that in a second. But all you want to do is give yourself, you see that body in that root area? That's what you want to keep. That's what you want. So after a while, you should probably end up with a nice little school pictures get down, popping off. Like I could put a barrette in this and, and send somebody on their way. So I'm just go ahead and I'm just round brushing this whole section to make sure that it has a nice hard bump in it because I am going to go through after this and change. So you can see all those layers that we cut are now starting to pop up. All of it is now starting to look like a style. It's starting to more resemble what we're going for. And when hair is wet, this it tends to do that. You just don't know what the hell it's looking like. Just saying. But I want to thank Fab Wigs for actually sending me another one of these wigs to to actually try this on because again I wanted to show you guys this and it was my first time in a long time doing a cut like this so I didn't want to record it because I know how frustrating it is to record y'all know when you're trying to do something this all of this stuff that I'm doing right now takes a lot of work to put the lights in the camera and make sure everything is angle right and it's in focus for a simple haircut now as you can see we starting to get some good old smoke, girl. That means that uh, we submitting that good old bump up in there. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to just have some type of body in it so I can kind of see how everything is laying and where we're going to go with it. So at this point, you should have pretty much short on the side, 
The back should be longer and your bang should have a hell of a bump in it. That's where we should be at. Again, don't worry about the part because we're going to go ahead do a little makeup trick with that. That's the only thing I didn't like about this unit and I kind of struggled with on my other one is that the knots didn't, they were very frustrating to bleach. So you're going to take your pressing comb. You guys know I've been doing this on my channel for years and we're going to just go in to lay this side. This is the side that's going to go flesh on your the side of your face so you want this to look as flat as possible and again this is you're going to cut this lace off so you want it to look like as if it's coming from your scalp you threw a little bit of edge control and or hairspray on it and you just went ahead and you know slicked it behind your ear so you want to make this side as flat as you can and then for the roots of this part we still want that bump in it but i want it to kind of go up and then drop because we're gonna we're gonna straighten those roots so we don't want it to just be like a full curl you know so we're gonna loosen this up just a little bit but not a lot and it's gonna start to give you this look which is more of a bump in the feel to it so once you do that you're gonna take your flat iron and you're only gonna go to the roots I mean no to the ends and you're just gonna bust one of those and as time goes on as the one in the background it'll start to just lay like that naturally but that bump at the top with the help of a little bit of hairspray will keep that you know those roots very much voluminous like that it's just the easiest way to do it without trying all of the over directing and pin curling and that whole thing because sometimes people get scared when you pin curl something and then you take it out and you brush it out and you be like why is it so tight they don't know how to so this is an easier method to do so here you're just gonna go and as you start to see it's starting to have that shape of the other one it's starting to look more like this one now so i'm gonna repart this part like eight more times because it was killing my whole soul people so what we're gonna do now is because the bank is obviously still too long we're gonna do that same method we're gonna go back and I had tried it on at this point to see like where everything was, but I still knew that it was too damn long. So we're going to go up. We're going to cut straight across. So that's why I'm trying to get everything up. We're going to go and cut straight across. And as you do this, it already has that bump in it because we already did it. It starts to lay like that very naturally. So it's not a very hard thing to do. Anything that you pull straight up and you cut straight across will automatically have a taper look to it when you let it drop, especially when you put somebody in. So now it looks like that. Still too long, but I want to show you. If you at this point now, we, we, we rocking and rolling. You in, you in a good place right now, okay? So... What you want to do now is go ahead, and that's all I'm doing here, is just cutting a little bit more, a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, just so that it starts to look more and more like it's supposed to, you know? Now, the back section here is the little piece that goes in the back where it looks like I kind of got it bumped, so it's this. We're, we're back at the 7 part, okay? We're back at the 7 part, so we're doing the top part of the 7, and then we're doing the... um lower part so you said these are just blunt we want to go ahead and pull it straight out so it can have more of a tapered look like the back of this head does because all of this as you can see is all kind of just one length and i'm going back just to check everything to make sure everything is cool and what i like to do when i cut is to move it in the opposite direction it lays because it'll let me know how those layers are going to look once i bump it in the back and that's all i did you could round brush this in the back if you want to you could take the same part and do it while it's wet but i chose to not do it like that because it's harder to see for you guys so for all of you guys who are starting out you just want to keep going through and cutting checking and cutting checking and cutting checking and cutting. that's all you're doing at this point is checking and cutting to make sure that the shape is still right but you're getting short enough where it's the desired look you don't necessarily have to do it as short as i did it you could keep it where it was in the beginning and flat iron it and then keep it pushing you know i like to use these pins because they kind of give me the section of an ear you know it shows you like okay this is where the ear would go i have longer ones i don't know where the hell they at though so here is the piece that goes behind my ear so you see it's a little too long there we're just gonna go up and cut it some more And then as you can see here, I just keep looking at this other one. Um, I'll put some photos um, at the bottom that you guys can look at as a reference if you like to. I'll link some of Tiana's pictures as well at the bottom so you can use those as a reference. And is it, at this point, 
you should already now kind of get the what's going on. So go back, and that's what I'm doing. I'm just going back and cutting off more and more and more so that I can get the shape that I want. And at this point, you're just going for the shape. That's it. And then you're going to start to bump it. Some people will bump it first and then go and start cutting more so they can see it because sometimes it makes it easier for them. It just depends on the person. You just don't, again, I cannot stress this enough, do not cut a whole bunch off or you're going to be so mad at yourself. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking some thinning shears and I'm thinning out the hair. Again, these wigs are very full. That's why I like. I opted to use this particular wig and this company because their density is really good and you just want to thin out especially not so much the roots but more so just the ends because you want it to have this nice tapered feathery look at the ends and you really it's hard to achieve that when the hair is exact it's just too full and because this is a very short cut you don't want to end up in a situation where you out here literally like you know you looking crazy so here i just went through and i just bumped it and kind of call and then just ran my fingers through it and kind of let it fall naturally so you see it's shorter this is when we sh we cut we cut the other side short we did the front bang piece and then we did the back and there you go you should have something like this so my next video is going to be me applying it with the uh bolt hole tape and the little extra stuff so there you go hope you guys enjoyed it i'll catch you guys in my next one